Joshua Walker here at Japan Society for another Tea Time. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Takeshi Kamiya-san. He's a director of urban design and a principal at HKS. So uh, Takeshi-san, let's start right here. What is HKS? Uh, thank you, Mr. Walker. So uh, we'll talk about HKS first. HKS is a global architectural firm. We do a design work for buildings and the cities. And then uh, how we got involved in this project was uh, back in three or four years ago, uh, Hokkaido Nipponham Fighters, it's a baseball team uh, in Hokkaido. They came to America, uh, talked to uh, Texas Rangers, that's an MLB team in the U.S. They have a business partnership from a while ago and they, because they wanted to know a little bit about the baseball stadium in America. And the fighters, they are extremely knowledgeable about American ballparks. They, in fact, gone to all 30 stadiums already and beyond. They're extremely knowledgeable and they wanted to know more of the American stadium. So they, Rangers asked HKS if uh, we are interested in meeting with the fighters. And we, of course, said yes. And the Rangers, by the way, we are, HKS is designing a Globe Life Field, which is just completed this year, just opened, and they're doing World Series right now. You guys should watch the TV, and that's pretty spectacular. So the fighters came to us and kind of introduced themselves, and we introduced ourselves, and then they said, oh, Takeshi-san, you speak Japanese, right? And I go like, yeah, I do, a little bit, because I was born and raised in Japan. <laughs> and they're about the same generation. That's how we kind of meet. And what's, what's interesting was that uh, they were not interested in just building a stadium. They were interested in building the whole city, in fact. And that is very, very different. They wanted to be a game changer in the Japanese business market, sports business market. And so in order to do that, they would like to understand how you could do a project from the kind of city point of view, build a, build a baseball stadium oriented city, and then go inside as well and saying, we would like to make an entertainment oriented stadium, not just a sports baseball thing. So that's when we said, that's exactly what we do. We don't just provide sports facilities, but we do actually provide the citywide uh, view of uh, kind of ballpark that is entertainment oriented. And that's, that's when, three, four, three or four years ago, that's we have started it. So that's how, how, how that gets started. I love this concept of kind of uh, the, the, the fighters coming to you all after uh, looking at all the different American baseball stadiums and the idea of an immersive experience. What is the difference between the, say, Japanese baseball stadiums and American baseball stadiums uh, and, and the kind of the business that goes along with that immersive hospitality experience that you're talking about designing for them? The very simply put, Japanese stadiums are gymnasiums meaning that's for sports, just for the athlete to compete. So audience is the second thing. So it's not about enjoying the games. On the other side, American ones are more entertainment oriented. That's why people will enjoy watching them. So how you build them is just completely different because it's about experience of the fans for the American ones. On, on the other hand, Japanese ones, are, it's, not, it's not the focus for the fans to be able to enjoy it. It's more about you know, you get the record, you get the competition, that, that's the focus. So they're the kind of fundamental difference between these two. And then it's interesting because Mr. Walker, you mentioned about Contador and Sapporo Dome, fighters playing Sapporo Dome, which is a problem because Sapporo Dome, as you know, was built for soccer. <laughs> so it's for the World Cup. And then, so the, how it's built, how it's designed is not fitting the baseball needs. The biggest issue they have is that uh, because it's built for soccer and soccer, it's perfect for soccer. But for the baseball, they have to use artificial turf, which is an artificial grass, which is really hard. And, and it's, it's a problem for the, for the players because they, they get hurt. It's so thin. It's, it's not safe for them. So fighters have been kind of really fighting hard to uh, accommodate uh, kind of safer stadium for the team so they can perform better. And that was not happening. And so 2023 is 20th anniversary for them to move to Hokkaido. And that's when they would like to open the stadium. So in terms of that time frame, I mean, obviously right now, all that we see on TV is basically the, the TV experience. There's not many people who are experiencing 
the the fan experience. Do you believe that with what's happening right now, this will actually make the fan experience that much more precious that people will say being there live and seeing this? I mean, this is not just about 2023 when when this new stadium opens, but also what happens in 2021 in terms of the Tokyo Olympics and how Corona is affecting the fan experience. How do you how do you see that playing out uh, from both a design, but also from a, a fan immersive experience? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. We don't really have the answer to that yet. But just our experience, you may be experiencing it too, myself too, just staying in New York and staying in this apartment, what you want to do, if possible, you want to go outside, meet people. More than ever, more than ever, because it's, we realize how important those things are. And so once we are done with this project, which is before Corona, we have started designing this before Corona, but our understanding or our belief about kind of importance of this physical, actual interaction with the people in the same place will be more important than before once, once this corona is, is resolved. And what about, uh, you know, what is unique about this new stadium? I mean, to me, baseball has a special place in, in the U.S.-Japan alliance, right? We're about to celebrate 150 years uh, next year uh, of this relationship. And, you know, I always got questions when I came back to America. I'm a, I'm a basketball player. So for me, watching Rui Hachimura and the NBA has been amazing. But there's always been uh, the Ichiros and, uh, you know, the, the Matsuis and these amazing Japanese players. There's no secret that Japanese are amazing at baseball, but sometimes people are really uh, interested when Americans come to Japan to experience the Japanese fan experience, the different cheers and the way in which beer and things that you would think would be the same everywhere are very different. They're culturally more Japanese or, or they're more American in certain experiences, whether you're in Texas or in New York. So how will this stadium kind of highlight the uniqueness of uh, a place like Hokkaido and this particular uh, kind of Nippon fighters as, as a team up there? Yes, a, a few things. I mean, that's a really great point, too. So the first thing I think uh, is that uh, this stadium is going to be transparent and there's multiple connection to the outside. So hmm. inside, outside barrier is almost minimum so that, uh, you know, it's a big glass wall that connect inside you and an outside you. And there are the multiple openings so that people can go inside and outside freely. And so, yeah, there are things like, you know, some technical issues we have to solve, but uh, the idea was to connect inside, outside almost seamlessly. So that's sort of a, a little bit of a Japanese uh, culture of this, uh, you know, not blocking outside world to inside. It's almost seamlessly connected. So that's one thing. And the other thing was this food culture. <laughs> mm. They offer amazing food. So uh, in the concourse, not like in America where you only pretty much only buy hot dogs, but they offer multiple local delicacies. So when you come to Hokkaido, you go to this ballpark, you can enjoy all kinds of local foods. So we, we put uh, quite a bit of time figuring out what, how we can offer that. And then the thirdly, I think this is also interesting, is, is a fan experience. It's a... Uh, it's a, it's a Japanese culture too, but there's only sort of one way for them to enjoy so far in the Japanese stadiums. But we, what we are offering is multiple ways of enjoying the sports, enjoying not only the sports actually, because we are aiming for non, non you know, baseball fans for, for, to come here as well. So there, are, there will be onsen in this ballpark wow. and there will be kids area, there will be beer garden, there'll be a whole bunch of things that can be enjoyable for non-baseball fans as well. So that, that experience is, is coming from the U.S. It's not really, you know, Japan doesn't really have that kind of stadiums yet. But that's a, that's a kind of an adaptation of the American culture into, into Japan, especially Hokkaido have this kind of American taste to begin with. What is your hope uh, for this project beyond just simply uh, the, the people of Sapporo enjoying this opportunity? Are you hoping that this is kind of a new model that other Japanese stadiums will embrace? Or is it something that you can see as a, a new revolution in terms of the, the synergies between architecture, local culture, cuisine, fan experience, and kind of baseball as more than just a sport, but more as an immersive experience? Yes, that's exactly right. And then that was actually not, it didn't come from us. It came from the fighters. 
the leadership, that's their vision. It's, it's sort of amazing thing that, that their team has this amazing vision of becoming a game changer of a Japanese sports business. So they have been dreaming so much and then they've been working with this more than 10 years. So it's been a long time. And then we just met them at the right time at the right moment. And, and then our vision is exactly the same. We, we want this to be the game changer of the Japanese market for the fans to enjoy more and the business to grow more so that, uh, you know, this was a missed opportunity because lots of people want to enjoy more. We just didn't have the facility that can provide that kind of environment. So this will, this will change. And then we are hearing a lot of good things already uh, from, from, the, from this field. That's great. So taking this one step higher, HKS does many projects and as an architectural firm working in Japan, um, are there other kind of facilities that HKS is working on and developing that help bridge uh, kind of American and Japanese cultures? Basketball <laughs> and a few, few other sports facilities right now. And uh, also we are cultivating, also working a little bit on the healthcare side and hospitality side. And HKS provide, you know, the big three sectors we have is healthcare, hospitality, and sports. And uh, all, all of these, I mean, Japan has incredible uh, knowledge and skills in those fields, but there are a few things that we can still offer from America. Uh, for example, hospitality, if you think about it, I mean, the traditional Japanese hospitality is amazing from service point of view. But the facility point of view, some of them are locally, traditionally f amazing, but you know, may not be international yet. So some guests coming from outside may want to enjoy something else sometimes, non-traditional ones. And then not enough um, opportunity in Japan yet of uh, enjoying those kind of uh, facilities. So that we can offer. And the other thing, you know, healthcare, the skill set of the doctors are amazing. But I don't, I don't know if you have ever hospitalized in Japan, but they're the, they're the room for improvement. <laughs> and so uh, we, we can provide sort of a, a better environment for the patient, doctors, and donors, and sponsors for the hospitals as well. From especially not just from the hospital building point of view, but also from the kind of master plan or the whole campus point of view as well because hospital tends to be really big and they just grow and grow and grow. So th those three areas are kind of, we are focusing on now and then we have a pretty good traction on those and we would like to cultivate more. Let me ask you finally, um, you know, your hope uh, for, for not just 2021, but 2023 when this stadium opens, uh, what your work, what HKS can contribute to the US-Japan relationship to, to move forward. I think this is a perfect example for Japanese people to see uh, what we were talking about because people talk about America has this entertainment sports experience and some people have experienced it and they're trying to import it in Japan, but in a Japanese way. This is the, really the first time the real MLB type uh, ballpark in Japan. And then right now people are only hearing it, but already get very excited but the first time they will experience it in the same spot with people in it. And then they will realize, oh, this is what they meant. And that'll be a game changer for, for how, what kind of experience they can go through in this game and before the game, after the game, this whole experience of leaving your house, going to this ball game and enjoy the environment. By the way, this place is surrounded by the nature. So there's a outside setting. So you enjoy outside and a whole bunch of development around it. So this, and then go back home. This whole experience would be just completely different from what they do now. So by experiencing it, it I, I hope uh, Japan will learn and what, uh, what, what they can incorporate from this American culture. And not only that, this, I think this is the best part we work with MLB stadiums too in America and they talk about fights because they know what we are doing in Japan and they know something amazing is happening. So they say, oh, we want something like fighters that they're doing in Hokkaido. So there'll be some export from Japan back to America. 
So I think that's a really interesting cultural exchange here happening. Well, hopefully in the future, we can kind of watch a game be played there between the Texas Rangers and the Nippon Fighters, or maybe even the Yankees and the Fighters. Thank you for your time. Thank you for what you're doing to bring these things to life. Uh, we look forward to, to further updates and, and hope that we can uh, continue to follow your progress along the way. Thank you very much for your time.